Hello my dudes, welcome back to the beginning of a new reading vlog. It's been a while since I vlogged, accidentally took a break there for a wee while, annoyed at myself for it, but it's fine. Today is a new day, this is a new vlog. Let's get back to vlogging. I'm currently taking part in Believe a Thon, which is a readathon hosted by Gavin at How to Train Your Gavin, he's the absolute best. All links and everything in the description. This started on Monday, it's now Wednesday. I have been in Slump City, guys. I've hardly read well, I have read some stuff in May, well, since the beginning of this month, but not a lot. I've just been in a weird reading mood. I don't know what I want to read, so I'm hoping that these middle grades will give me some momentum and I can actually get some books read because it's like the middle of the month and I've only read one book, but it's fine. Everything is fine. I did read uh, Gyo by Junji Upside Down. I read Gyo by Junji Ito though, wow. <laughs> Can you tell it's been a while since I've looked? But I loved this. This was so wacky and outrageous and also grotesque and just weird, but also kind of funny in places. I don't know if that was intentional, but I found it funny. And I definitely want to read more of Junji Ito's um, horror mangas because this was fan freaking tastic. If you haven't heard of this one, how do I describe this? Well, okay, so it's about um, two characters who come across a fish who has seemingly walked out of the sea, it's grown legs, it is rotting, so it absolutely stinks, and that's just where it begins. <laughs> I don't really want to tell you more than that because this just gets so weird, I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. But if you like horror and you like weird, this is really, really good. I wasn't, didn't know what to expect when I first went into this, but damn, did this go from zero to a hundred real quick. It, it was, like I said, very far-fetched, but yet part of me is like, this could, this could happen. <laughs> yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Weird and entrancingly horrifying. I gave it four stars. Can't wait to read more. So that's all I've read this month. Well, I tried, I kind of started a couple. So I also started The Furies by Katie Lowe. I got about 120 pages in and I put it down because I wasn't feeling it. That's not the book's fault, that's, that's on me. I've just not been in the right mood for it. Um, I did enjoy what I read though, so I will definitely will be continuing. When Becca described this as the craft but British, I can totally see that, so I will be continuing for sure. This book starts off where you're told of a young girl's death. There's no known cause of death or anything, so it's very mysterious. And then we flash back um, a year in the past and are introduced to our main character who has had it rough. She lost her father and her younger sister in a car accident but then they got some money through so she is now going to attend a very posh well-to-do um, sixth form college and there she meets some girls that she becomes friends with. It's set in the late 90s and these girls are you know they're smoking, they're drinking. I do like the 90s references, it's not overly done. The writing is good, it's descriptive and atmospheric but still fast-paced so I might pick this up again this week. I know this is going to be a kind of believe a couple of weeks for me, but I don't just want to read middle grade back to back. I'd like to add in some of the others from my TBR because I'm a have to. I've only finished one book so far this month. It's fine. But also before I talk to you about the uh, believe a books, I did start reading Royal Assassin as well for the Elderling Along. This is my second time reading the series. Absolutely loving it. Only 65 pages in though. I thought I could break the slumpiness I was feeling by rereading one of my favourites. It didn't work, so. Here's hoping these will do the trick. So for Believeathon, the first prompt or the first place on the map is the Poacher's Pocket Inn. Did I get that correct? Yes, I did. And of course, I'm going to read A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison because the Poacher's Pocket Inn is the place, well, I think where our main characters live in this world inside this book. And the prompt is to read the first book in the series. So this works perfectly because I also do want to read the sequel at some point during the Believeathon. I'm not sure how many books I'm going to read for this. We'll just see how we get on. I'm also not sure which ones I'm going to read for which prompts. Jade, bless her, did work it out for me and then I promptly forgot. So I might have to ask Jade again to uh, remind me what I'm reading for what thing. <laughs> but this is going to be the first one. I'm really excited about it. All my friends who have read it seem to absolutely adore this um, series, actually, not even just the first book, but they love the sequel too. This one we follow three sisters who live in the Poacher's Pocket Inn on this island, but they're under a curse, so they have to use some magical objects to break the curse. I guess there's going to be some kind of quest to do that. 
and from what I've heard the sisters have a lovely relationship and they're each quite unique in personality so I'm excited to get on and be in on this hype. <laughs> then after that one I might pick up The Secret Garden, I'm definitely going to be reading this at some point in the next couple of weeks uh, by Francis Hodgson Burnett. Yeah I got the name right this time, look at me go. <laughs> but this was one of my favourite movies as a kid and when I showed it in my TBR so many people told me it's one of their favourite books and they loved this just as much as the film if not more so. So I know what to expect with it and I love children's classics, they're always so charming. Um, so these two maybe this week and also maybe I'll finish this out. But those are the reading plans in terms of life stuff since I last vlogged, nothing's really changed. I did just dye my hair again and um, it's not quite where I want it to be but I will fix it with time and also toner. <laughs> and I got a new shirt and it kind of matches the lilac streaks in my hair but yeah that's pretty much everything. Oh I work more hours at work now so that's cool. Work has been batshit bananas so <laughs> but also good don't get me wrong. Uh, but yeah speaking of work I'm actually on my lunch break right now so I need to go back to work after I've had myself a sandwich. If I have some time I'm going to start a pinch of magic I think. I know the audiobook is also available on script so yeah, finally gonna do this. We're gonna break this slump together. We can do it. I'm hopeful. Let's, okay, yeah. How do I finish these clips? I'm just gonna finish it here. I'll, I'll speak to you in a bit. <laughs> loves it's now Thursday it's the evening I just finished work I had a nice night last night I got to chat with G and Jade for a little bit which was lovely Bella is yelling in the background please excuse that but last night I read a big chunk of A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison I'm 212 pages in already I don't have very long very far to go and this is so good it's just what I need I feel like this is gonna pull me out of that slump that's what we wanted this is doing it I'm particularly enjoying the characters the sister relationship the talk of grief and family and also this surprised me because the stakes do feel pretty high in this. That actually is something that surprises me about a lot of middle grades. I read it thinking it's just going to be, you know, really didactic and everyone's going to be fine all the time. And then I'm on the edge of my freaking seat. And this is definitely the same case with this. I really like how the world is set up. I'm surprised it actually seems to be more low magic. Oh my God, what is wrong with her? Bellatrix, are you okay? Have you had a day? She is just being so noisy today, aren't you? I'm actually quite tired because she was being quite noisy last night as well. She's just in a mood, I tell you. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm surprised at the world. I thought it was going to be a magic filled world and it's more low magic besides the curse and the magical objects. Um, but yeah, this is a lot of fun. I feel like, wow, the cats are now gonna fight, aren't they? I feel like there is gonna be some twist perhaps in this. I haven't got any predictions or anything yet, but this was what I expected, honestly, from hearing so many people talk about it. Um, yeah, I knew it w I would like it, and I am. So I'm hopefully gonna finish it out tonight and I'll give you more thoughts when I'm done. It's super quick. And then once I've finished that, I might pick up the Furies again, <laughs> or I might read another one for Believe-a-thon. Uh, we do have D&D &D in about half an hour, so we're gonna play in that for a couple of hours probably. Uh, well, probably more than a couple of hours actually. <laughs> and after that, I'll get back to reading. But I do have a wee book haul to share with you. Firstly, I received a couple of gifts, so thank you so much to Linda and Bobby. Funny thing, <laughs> they both pre-ordered these for me. I had no idea. But this is The Girl and the Stars by Mark Lawrence. Mark Lawrence wrote one of my favourite series, which is the Book of the Ancestor trilogy, which starts with Red Sister. That's the one about the assassin nuns, if you haven't heard me talk about that enough. But thank you so much, guys. And um, Bobby did tell me she was sending me something that she had pre-ordered something for me. She's actually pre-ordered another book for me that should hopefully be coming towards the end of this month. Bless her wee heart, she is so generous. My wish list is private, but it does not stop Bobby because she has my address. And I will forever be so grateful to her. She is so generous, I love her the most. Channel link in description. Please do go check out her channel, she's awesome. I cannot wait to read this, and if there's any chance in hell that I can get it onto this month's TBR, I'm gonna. Thank you so much to Linda and Bobby. You guys know me very well. And Linda, if you uh, want to link your social media in the comments, I can DM you and say thank you if you'd like. But 
that was a lovely surprise. <laughs> I also bought a few myself because I was feeling really sad one day and I just really wanted a dopamine boost so I just bought some books. Um, I'm really excited about all of them though <laughs> and two of them I hope to read this month. So I already showed you, um, this was on my TBR for this month anyway, I was going to try the audiobook but I thought no, I'm going to buy a physical copy because I feel like this is going to be something I'm going to really like and probably want to um, lend out to my friends and it is The Girl With Seven Names by Hyun So Lee, I think I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> I'm highly anticipating this one. I am kind of fascinated by North Korea. I've watched many a documentary, as I said, in my TBR. And this one tells, well, not doesn't tell the tale, but um, the author recounts her life growing up in North Korea and how she eventually did flee North Korea when she was 17. I feel like it's gonna be, it's gonna be a hard one to read, but I'm excited for it nonetheless. One that I also got for Believeathon, so I hope to read it in the next couple of weeks, is Ink Heart by Cornelia Funk. And look at this cover, guys. The whole series has got a new cover design. I was very tempted to buy all three of them, but I thought, no, let's hold off, see how we feel about the first one. It's quite junky for a middle grade, but I'm excited nonetheless because this gets recommended to me all the time because I love books about books, books that include different stories and then they intertwine. You know the books. If you've been watching it, well, you know. <laughs> anyway, this is one of those, so very excited. It says, Maggie loves stories, but her father Mo hasn't read aloud to her since her mother mysteriously disappeared. When a stranger knocks at their door, Mo is forced to reveal an extraordinary secret. As he reads aloud, words come alive, and dangerous characters step out of the pages. Suddenly, Maggie is living the kind of adventure she has only read about in books, but this one will change her life forever. I feel like it's gonna work for the, well, a few prompts for Believe a Thumb. So at some point in the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna try this and very excited for it because everyone who's recommended it obviously loved it a lot and I expect I'll be the same. I also couldn't help myself and I bought the sequel to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This is Good Girl, Bad Blood. So we follow the same uh, protagonist, which was Pippa in the first book. It's a YA thriller mystery series and I was so impressed by the first one. I gave it four stars. I loved the ending, didn't predict it, and that is always a plus for a thriller, obviously. Um, and in this one, she says she's not a detective anymore. Her true crime podcast about the murder case she solved last year, so the previous book, has gone viral. Yet Pip insists her investigating days are behind her. But she will have to go back on her word when someone close to her goes missing and the police can't do anything about it. So this book is gonna be about those events. And if it's anything like the first one, yes it is. We have um, lots of transcripts and interviews, mixed media. I can't imagine this one will take me very long to read. God knows when I'm actually gonna to get to it, but you have like diary entries and things. Um, should be good. I'm hoping to love it as much as the first one. I was a little bit concerned because it was wrapped up so well. I was like, hmm, how are they gonna do a sequel out of this? It's just gonna be a different case. But yeah. I have high hopes. And lastly, I saw this one on book Twitter. It wasn't like really anticipated or anything, but it just sounds really cool. Sounds like something I'd like. And the cover is like really foiled and cool as well. And it's Master of Sorrows by Justin Call. I think this is a debut. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll put it on the screen. But let me just read you what it says here. And hopefully Bella won't be yelling too much in the background whilst I do that. But anyway, the Academy of Shembaloo has stood against magic for centuries. Hidden from the world, acting from the shadows, it trains its students to detect and retrieve magical artifacts, which it jealously guards from the, from the misuse of others. So, school setting. <laughs> of the Academy's many students, only the most skilled can become avatars. Warriors thieves, cap capable of infiltrating the most heavily guarded vaults, and only the most determined can be trusted to resist the lure of magic. So, you train to become an avatar in this school and have to resist the lure of magic because magic is bad. Doesn't it sound cool? It's it's another chunker, but you know I like those. So if anyone's read that, well, read this, can you please let me know your thoughts on it? Um, I just bought this one on a whim, not my usual deal. I usually wait until like half of Booktube have uh, read it and reviewed it before I pick anything up for myself, but I'm gonna try that at some point. So that's the haul. I need to now go and play some D&D for a little bit and I will let you know how I found a pinch of magic tomorrow. Curious butterflies. You mean bread and butterflies? Oh yes, of course. Hmm? Hello my loves. This is the first time I've picked up the camera in like over a week. 
It's been a bit of a mad week and I'm very happy that we have a bank holiday this weekend so I can finally get some reading done. It's gonna be a great time. But I do need to let you know my thoughts on what I have read. Not too much, but I have some thoughts. So I'm guessing this is gonna be more of a two week vlog. So the whole of Believathon. Speaking of, I've only read one book for Believathon. I am really letting myself down, but more importantly, I'm letting Gavin down. So this weekend, I'm hoping to tackle definitely at least a couple more middle grades before Believathon ends. But A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. I really enjoyed it. I ended up giving it four stars. I really liked the sister relationship, the magic, and also how it tackled grief and forgiveness was like a big theme in here as well. I definitely will be reading the sequel. I did expect to give it five stars though but it used a plot device that's not my favorite. I'm not a fan. A lot of TV shows and movies do this in particular. And I always get a little bit disappointed because the stakes feel less high after that point. Um, this one though, for a middle grade, the stakes did feel very high up until that point. I think I've already mentioned that last week. I don't know, it was a week ago. <laughs> so that is of course a personal preference thing. I obviously can't tell you what that is because it would be a huge spoiler. But for, for a middle grade, especially, I can't imagine the demographic would like have any qualms with that. I think it's just me, as I mentioned, so four stars highly recommend still and I yeah like I said I'm hoping to read I was hoping to read the sequel as like the last prompt on the map by the end of this it's probably not gonna end up happening but I will be picking up the sequel eventually if not this weekend depending on how well I do so that definitely helped me get out of Slump City but then I continued on with the Furies and I think this put me back in because this has taken me so long to read I'm still not finished I have like the last 50 pages to go and I think I just got a bit bored it wasn't as thrilling as I was expecting even though there are lots of things in here that I do enjoy reading about such as the Dark Academia and also all the references to Greek mythology or like folklore in general. I don't know overly much about a lot of mythology. It's definitely something I want to learn more about. I had a fascination, as I think a lot of people did when they were, were a kid, of um, Greek mythology in particular. So yeah, that was cool. I learned some stuff. It does feel really feminist. I really like the 90s vibes. It's just a touch slow. And I like that it is as descriptive as it is. Um, it was quite fast paced at the beginning and then I feel like the pace slowed down. And you all know how much I love me a metaphor or a simile. I mean, style of C, I love that. But I have to say, I feel like it's being done a bit too much in this. It's very macabre, like everything such as wine is likened to blood and you know, flowers are flesh. There's, it's very emo. I do like it, but it's a lot. And I completely agree with Becca. It does feel like the craft, but British, but I loved the craft. And this is a very toned down version, I think. And plus, I don't feel attached to any of these characters. At the beginning of this book, you know one of them is gonna die. And it's quite cool to, you know, be guessing throughout which of them it's gonna be, but I don't overly care that much about the characters, so I'm not like hoping it's one over the others. It's it's a strange one. I have 50 pages to go. I'm hoping to smash that out today, so I'll let you know my uh, final thoughts. But as a debut, I really like the writing. I just wish there was more character work there. But you can definitely see all the influences in there and just how much research has been done, which is cool. I also did start The Girl With Seven Names by Hyun So Lee. I started the audiobook and I made it to like chapter two. <laughs> so not really any thoughts yet, apart from the introduction almost had me crying. I, I know this is gonna be a very hard story to read and she is a very inspiring lady. So I'm excited to listen to some more of that. But as I mentioned, Believeathon finishes on Sunday. So I need to pick up some more middle grade. It's actually a great time to start the old reading again because today is the second round of Raidathon hosted by Jade at JD Ray Reads. So I'm excited. Of course, I had to join in. And the one I'm thinking of picking up today is The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett because this one was on the TBR. The TBR is looking wild, y'all. So yeah, priorities are Secret Garden and then maybe one of these two just to get in an extra one into Believeathon. I know Jade loved this one, so as it's Raidathon, maybe I should try and read both of these today. It is already in the afternoon because I had a lovely lion. And then I watched uh, Drag Race whilst I was getting ready and me and Massey have started watching Little Fires Everywhere. I have read the book. I didn't love the book that much, like I liked it enough to want to read everything I never told you, which is on the TBR. So 
because I am enjoying Little Fires Everywhere and um, the TV show because mostly that's probably because it's Reese Witherspoon and um, Kerry Washington and those two are fantastic. I definitely want to read this one as well. I feel like I'm going to prefer this one. So maybe after today, depending on how I do with the middle grade choices, I might pick this one up tomorrow. So those are the reading plans. I'm going to go get started because I know very soon Jade and G are going to be on Instagram doing like a live reading and I just, I want to be there for that. So I'm gonna start with this and I'll come back to you later with first thoughts. I'll also finish this out, let you know, and I will also think if there's anything else I need to tell you in that time. So I'll give you an update in a bit. Come over. No, I don't. <laughs> well, I'm glad she's here. Are you doing right about Cody? I don't know if you are. Oh, hell yes. Not done that much reading. <laughs> Which I knew is gonna be the case, but I did listen Go. to two chapters, which is around an hour Same. in the morning. And when everyone's silent and there's lots of people, I'm just gonna be like, you know, when you're in a funeral and you ain't supposed to laugh. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm like, <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I'm probably likely to cry. So oh, that does not make me feel better at all. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 like, I don't know how to react to that. <laughs> I will only cry because everyone's dying in this book, like... Uh. Oh, well in that case... <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. So during the live, I read a whopping 35 pages of The Secret Garden. I kept stopping to check if G was laughing. I feel like we all were doing that. Or if Jade was crying, actually. But so far, so good. It's all coming back to me now, you know? I loved the movie as a kid. Hello, editing me here. Just wanted to pop in and apologize for the weird uh, rattling and tapping noise you'll hear over the next few clips. Turns out there was a screw loose on my viewfinder on my camera. So that's what you can hear. I am very sorry, I've since fixed it, so that shouldn't be a problem in the future, but it'll only be for the next few clips anyway, so hopefully that's cool. Okay, back to the vlog. <laughs> Mary's a piece of work, isn't she? She's very selfish and very spoiled, very angry child. And then of course, because of the um, death of her parents, she is being taken to live with her uncle in England and we've got to meet Mrs. Medlock. I've already forgotten her name. <laughs> yes, it is Mrs. Medlock. Excited to see more um, interactions between those two and see Mary come into her own. And I really like Martha. I did have a bit of a shock shocking moment when, you know, the casual racism that was thrown in here, but you know, product of the time and all that. And I was um, more so outraged at Mary's reaction there's some stuff she says about her servants back in India. It's just, oh, okay. Um, yeah, but aside from that, good start. Before I go ahead and read some more of this and continue with the fur, the, I almost said the furries. <laughs> Very different, probably different type of book that would be. The Furies. I'm going to set you down and do a little fairy loot unboxing because my match box arrived. I'm excited to show you what was in there and I also want to let you know about the book because I have read the book. So if unboxings aren't your thing, because I do my fairy loot unboxings in vlogs now, because I work for fairy loot and I'm 100% biased. But if bookish unboxings aren't your thing, you can skip to this time. But for anyone who's interested, I'm gonna set you down and show you what was included in March's box. So here we go. I will try and be quick with the this. But, spoiler card, looks like this. This month's theme is Break the Curse and the artwork is, as always, done by the amazing Tara at Tara T Jar. And the first big item we have on top, it's a Cruel Prince inspired, well, Queen of Nothing inspired um, tumbler, which comes with a straw. And I'm hoping this will help me um, drink more water throughout the day because I drink a lot of tea, but I don't really drink enough water but as I said it's the queen of nothing inspired so this is the design and the quote on here says to family and fairyland and pizza and stories and new beginnings and scheming great schemes I can toast to that with holly black at the bottom and the design for this was by Nova and Tail we also have a headband which has a Raven Boys inspired design on it done again by Tara so here's what that design looks like got some nice foiling on there. I am a fan 
of a headband so I'll be wearing this for the rest of this unboxing <laughs> tag needs to come off though the plastic's still there it's fine we're just gonna move on <laughs> we then have a book sleeve which is nice and thick it has a <laughs> zip nice and padded this gorgeous design is by Evie Bookish and it's um, A Curse So Dark and Lonely Inspired. I forgot the name for a book for a second by Bridget Kemmerer. The quote says, failure is an absolute. Just because you couldn't save everyone doesn't mean you didn't save anyone. We also have a lanyard which has a Caraval inspired design on here by Katrina Book Designs. There we go. It has cards and roses and top hats on there. We also have a passport cover which is a Citizen of Wonderland passport cover which was inspired by Heartless by Marissa Mayer. Alice in Wonderland is one of my favourite series. So I like this. And this was also done by Nova and Tail 2. And also by Katrina at Katrina Book Designs, we have a little notepad, which is um, upside down, but Aladdin inspired, which is just nice to jot things, you know. Also for the tarot cards this month, we have these two. So we have the Seven of Cups and the Eight of Cups. These were done by Gabriella Dotvigioso, and this is inspired by the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. And also this month we included this little postcard with artwork by Tara, which is a Court of Fonds and Roses inspired with a Valaris kind of city scenes design on it. With a little note on the back from the whole team, just thanking everybody for their patience and understanding. Obviously this box was delayed because of the COVID-19 situation. There's been lots of delays and we truly, truly appreciate all your understanding. It means the world. So thank you anyone who is a subscriber, you're the best that's all for the items so the book for this month is bone cryer's moon by Catherine purdy and we have some great like sage green if you can almost see shimmery sprayed edges here and this is an exclusive cover it comes of course signed by the author and we have artwork on the reverse of the dust jacket too which looks like this gorgeous art by diana d warrack as well so we have our three main characters here. We have Sabine, we have Aylas. I'm still not sure how to pronounce her name and I've read the book. And then we have Bastien as well. And of course with the book, you get the author letter with some more beautiful art on the other side of the characters. So do let me know what your favorite item was that was included in Matches Box. I'd be very curious to know. I think mine is probably this or the book sleeve. So this one is a YA fantasy enemies to lovers kind of thing. We have one of our main characters, Alice. Well, two of our main characters, Alice and Sabine, who are bone criers or lurers. And it's their job to ferry the dead. But before they can do that, they have to complete a rite of passage. And this rite of passage includes luring your soulmate or amore to a bridge and then taking his life. This had some great plot twists. I love the writing, the magic and the world. It's really well plotted and easy to understand. There's a lot to learn, but it's just done so naturally woven in there. It's a really good time and I, I would I would recommend it. Maybe not my perfect kind of book because it is enemies to lovers and I'm not really about the romance, but the friendship in here between Sabine and Alice, I'm still gonna call it Alice. It might be Alyssa or Alessa or I'm not sure, but the friendship though, the friendship. And I am maybe thinking about picking up the sequel too, which I wasn't expecting. I didn't think this would be my kind of thing, but I just loved the world and the magic so much. And I read this because I hosted the read along for this, well, for this book. So the read along for this one finished yesterday. Thank you to anyone who did join. I had such a fun time hosting over the past week because I got to read so many theories. There were so many revelations and still some theories that I think could work for the sequel. So it's been a great time. Thank you to anyone, as I said, who did join. And that also means I have read another book this month, which is nice. I obviously just couldn't put it on the wheel of TBR because I would have spoiled what the book was for the box and I didn't want to do that. So that's another book down though for this month. Yay. I just need to, you know, crack on with the with the rest of the TBR now. <laughs> oh, and before I get back to reading, actually, I received a parcel, which I know, I think I know what this is. I was expecting something from Bobby and she's already told me what it is. So let me see if I'm right. I'm very excited though. This is one of my most anticipated books for this year. Like she just gets me. Love you so much, Bobby. You are the best, most generous, amazing, super human person ever. Anyway, <laughs> it is, it is the one I was expecting from Bobby. Thank you so much 
so much, girl. She pre-ordered this for me. It's the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix, who, re who wrote, sorry, My Best Friend's Exorcism, which I just enjoyed so much. This one, again, is horror. I'm expecting it to be campy horror. Um, Bobby has told me some things about it already. Oh, it's green. Look. <laughs> oh my God, I love this color. And it says, it has like a little library stamp here, which is very intriguing. Orange and papers this just screams halloween doesn't it i am not gonna save it for halloween though i really wanted to read this and the girl in the stars this month but my tbr is looking a bit mad isn't it so maybe next month if i can't squeeze it in in the next week or so which i doubt but bobby has me really excited even though i was already excited because this one i think is set in the 90s if i remember correctly from what bobby said but it follows a, she called them a group of Karens who have a book club and a young charming vampire joins the book club and then that means that our main character has to become a vampire slayer or something? Something like that. But I know Bobby was enjoying it and I just love his writing and his humour. So I'm really, really excited to get to this one. Thank you so much again, Bobby. Honestly, you are the freaking best I don't deserve you. <laughs> so now back to reading. I'm gonna finish this one out first I think because then it'll make me feel accomplished because it'll be another book down and then I'll continue on with this. I think this is gonna be really really charming. I'm excited. I am a little bit wary though of the time. Thankfully Massey has gone to do the weekly shop without me which means even more time for reading. So I will come back to you with thoughts later. <laughs> Also, my loves, you may have noticed that I've kept the rainbow around and I'd like to say that's because I like it. I have actually have decided I want to change it, but I've been too lazy to do that. Also, this plant was over there in like the darker section, but <sighs> meet Fern. Now, Fern is struggling. I had Fern for a week and Fern is already close to death. I know. <laughs> and the absolute worst. Let's all pray for Fern. I should just stick to artificial plants, but I've moved it over here for more light because I read online that that would help. <laughs> and I should have read online first what would be the best environment for Fern, but I'm a terrible, terrible mother. But I will try and learn from my mistakes and revive her. Anyway, I am gonna read now. <laughs> Hello, so it's now the next day. I should have really given you an update last night or something, but I was on a roll and I didn't want to stop and jinx it because I read quite a bit. I could have definitely read more, but Matty and I always watch like a TV show or something whilst we eat dinner and we started watching that new flower plant show thing on Netflix. I can't remember the name of it, but I'm obsessed. <laughs> I now really want to be a florist or a gardener of some kind. I want to make some huge sculptures out of plants. It looks like so much fun. But saying that, it's probably not a good career choice for me, is it? <laughs> they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. But anyway, I finished two books yesterday and started another one. So not a bad readathon. Definitely could have read more, but I did love in particular this one, The Secret Garden absolutely adored it, knew I would, it was just so charming and so twee and quaint, all of the things I want from a children's classic. It was just so fucking wholesome and I had a great time reading this. I loved Mary's character development as you'd expect, the way that she grows some empathy and learns to be less um, selfish and how her behaviour or her past behaviour is mirrored in another character which cements it even more in her brain that she was a brat before and it was just, oh, it was everything. And it also made me so nostalgic. I completely forgot or didn't know, I haven't seen the movie in that long, that this is set in Yorkshire. So I loved the Yorkshire characters in particular. <laughs> Particularly Ben, he reminded me so much of my own granddad and I spent a lot of my childhood gardening with my grandmas and like walking on the moors and stuff. So yeah, it was, um, it hit me. <laughs> this line made me chuckle. It says, it is a Yorkshire habit to say what you think with blunt frankness. An old Ben Weatherstaff was a Yorkshire Moor man. And yes, I agree, it's definitely a Yorkshire thing to be super blunt. I can't recommend this enough, but I would say if you haven't heard a really broad Yorkshire accent before, you may struggle with some of the dialogue, so maybe opt for the audiobook. Oh, also, before I forget, Mrs. Medlock, right? In the movie, she's a major part of the movie. And then in this, I was confused. I think I said before that I was hoping for more interactions with Mary and Mrs. Medlock. 
yeah, not a lot of that. That's really surprised me. I definitely need to watch the movie again for sure to see the differences. And I tell you what, I am nervous for the new adaptation because even though this hints at magic and magic is spoken about a lot and there's a lot of childhood wonder, it's definitely not super fantastical as the trailer seems to be for the new movie. So a little bit apprehensive about that. I'll probably still watch it though. But anyway, five stars. <laughs> and my second Believe-a-thon read down. I didn't tell you what prompt I was using for this because I couldn't decide, but I think I'm gonna pick this one for The Wonderfalls, which is to read a book featuring a disability. I think it kind of works. I'm, I mean, I'm playing this loose, but kind of works. And then that means that the one I've picked next is Potkin and Stubbs by Sally Green. I'm already halfway into it. I fell asleep and couldn't continue, but I really wanted to finish this yesterday, but oh well. I'm gonna finish this out today. Um, I think this one could work for Mermaid's Lagoon, which is to read a book featuring a female bond, because I feel like there's gonna be a good bond between our main character, uh, Potkin, and her mother. And I think, if I remember correctly, Jade said it would work, so. I think I'm picking this one. <laughs> well, I'm picking that prompt and I'm really enjoying this actually. I didn't expect it to be as, I guess, dark and macabre as it is for a middle grade. Uh, but this one we follow a character called Lil Potkin who is a wannabe reporter and she lives in a place that's very corrupt. The mayor seems super shady. Things have been closed down. There seems to be a lot of control over the media. So a lot of politics, which again, I wasn't expecting for a middle grade. This seems like it's going to be really well done and it's easy to pick up as well. You know, it's quite naturally woven in there. I don't feel like it'd be too confusing for the demographic. And it's really atmospheric. It feels a little bit gritty. It feels like watching a detective TV show. Um, but at the beginning we follow Lil who is trying to get a scoop, get a new story. And she stumbles across a missing persons case. And I can't tell you much more than that, but I absolutely love the atmosphere. As I mentioned, there's some paranormal elements in here as well, which I'm loving. And there seems to be a bigger mystery involving some um, fires that are happening that are suspicious and some um, like mob gang members. <laughs> I was very sleepy as I was reading this, so I'm probably not explaining it very well, but I am halfway in, so I'm hoping to finish out today. This is so much quicker than, say, the children's classic I picked up before it. So I'm gonna knock this one out just now. Um, so that'll be three books down for Believe It I was hoping to do six. I don't think it's gonna happen by the end of today. Oh, also, <laughs> The Furies by Katie Lowe. And eh, I liked the ending. It did surprise me. I liked how, you know, melancholy this was and how gothic and, all the inspirations, but it just wasn't as thrilling as I was hoping it would be. Um, I think it was wrapped up well and the writing was really nice. So I'll definitely read more from this author in the future. I'm not quite sure what it was. Maybe I was expecting too much going in, um, but I have seen some different reviews for this since I finished it and it was my lowest rated. That's probably because it hasn't got as many ratings overall as the rest of my books on my TBR. You know how average rating works. <laughs> Why am I explaining this? But I just didn't love it like I expected to, especially considering there were so many elements in this that I did enjoy. You know, the dark academia, the witchiness. Maybe I just wanted more of the witchiness. But it had a good atmosphere. Maybe it was the pacing. Maybe it just wasn't like thrilling enough for me. I don't know. But it was okay. I gave it three stars, but it's like a low three stars because this took me so long to get through. I just wasn't as gripped as I was hoping I'd be. I don't know. Is it just me? Let me know your thoughts if you've read it um, because some people seem to really have enjoyed it and some people just feel a bit meh about it, it seems. Um, so let me know. Yeah. Still not sure about this. But anyway, the plan is now to finish this out. So I'll let you know my thoughts on that one. And then after that, <laughs> I do still really want to read Inkheart because I know I'm going to love it, especially as it includes a book within a book kind of deal. But this is bloody long for a middle grade. It's 540 pages. And the text is quite small too for what you'd expect for a children's book. So I'm gonna hold off on this, I think, because I don't think I'll get it finished by the end of today. And you know, we're trying to trying to get through these. So <laughs> instead, I might pick up a book that I don't actually own. I might just get um, an ebook for this. I kind of want to read Percy Jackson because I never read it as a kid, and I don't know why. Because I really did like Greek mythology and all and all of the things, but I just never picked it up. And then obviously, it's being adapted now, isn't it, for Disney? And I have seen the original movie though. And we all know it wasn't great, so it didn't make me want to read the book. But now that it's been adapted, 
with like Rick Riordan having some creative say so. I am excited now, so I might try the first book. I've heard that it's super quick read, that's why I'm picking it, and also I feel like it would work for some of the prompts for Believeathon 2. That being said, it's already early afternoon, <laughs> and Massey and I are gonna have a call later with our friends, because we haven't spoken to them like face to face in so long, we miss them, and we're gonna play some like games and quizzes and things, so that might be a lot of my evening as well. So I will just keep y'all updated. Ow, I hit my elbow. Fun. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's now Monday. Massey and I went for a lovely walk this morning, it was really nice to get out, and we made friends with a swan, so that was good. Also yesterday I had a nice day as well because we were chatting with my friends for quite a long time last night, so it was kind of a rush to get some of these finished yesterday, but I did it. First of all, I finished Potkin and Stubbs. This was such a fun mystery, I can definitely see why Jade loves this book and this series so much. And it was very creepy as well, I do love a creepy children's book and it wasn't super obvious and I just think it was really well done, it was clever. I would say though, not really my kind of thing, I should have known because I don't really like um, books that are focused on the detective or the reporter, like when they're driven by that, that's not really my cup of tea in particular, so I don't know if I will continue, I might do because I really like the friendship and the writing's great as well. So maybe I will continue, but I'm not in any rush. Um, still would definitely recommend it, but I think I'm giving it three stars. It's probably just because I don't like the whole detective thing, usually. <laughs> still very happy I read it though, and then I read Percy Jackson, the first one, the Lightning Thief one. And I get the hype now. I'm so happy that I'm finally in it. I do have some, you know, basic knowledge of Greek mythology, but I learned a lot whilst reading that book, and it was just a breeze. It was so quick, and each chapter's quite action-filled. I really liked how it started, actually. I feel like, because I've only seen the movie, we didn't get that much backstory on Percy and his life, from if I can remember correctly. <laughs> it was what I expected it would be. It was a lot of fun, it was educational, I learned some more things. I obviously knew about most of the beasts that were introduced, or monsters. But that was just a fun time. I'll definitely be continuing on in the series. Uh, as people say about most series, it gets better with every book. So yeah, I'm happy I'm back in, well, I'm in on the hype and I will be picking up the second book at some point. I don't know when. I think I'm giving that four stars, actually. There were a few things where I'm like, okay, that's very coincidental and oh, does that really make sense? But that's just me nitpicking, isn't it? <laughs> so for the amount that I enjoyed it, four stars, I think. And for the prompt for Believe-a-thon for Percy Jackson, I am going to use Black Ice Bridge for that one. So I was like one book and one prompt away from doing the whole map. So I'm a little bit sad. I could have definitely have read more, but it's just been a bit of a crazy, it's been a bit of a crazy month to be fair. But I'm still glad that I read four books and I have some new favourites. I mean, particularly this one. So Believe-a-thon has been definitely a fun time and I'm excited for the second round and um, second round the next round the next round looks amazing and I am definitely gonna give myself a kick up the ass for that one and read more than four hopefully <laughs> but I think I'm gonna end it here I think this vlog will be pretty long and I don't plan on reading anything today really because I'm going to be tidying the flat and also editing this vlog so let's just do a quick recap of the books I talked to you about this week and the ratings and all of that jazz so the first one I mentioned in this vlog was was uh, manga. It was Gyo by Junji Ito. I gave this four stars. It was just so creepy and just amazing in its weirdness. Definitely recommend. Recommend. I'm also reading that for part of the Asian Readathon, which I haven't mentioned at all in this vlog, but I still have more books to read for that. That'll be in next week's vlog. <laughs> Other ones that weren't part of Believeathon, I finished The Furies by Katie Lowe. I gave this three stars. Still don't really know how I feel about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you have them. And then I talked about Bone Cries Moon by Catherine Purdy, which I read as part of the read-along, hosted the read-along for Fairy Loot, and I don't think I told you my rating. I gave this 3.5 because I wasn't in love with the romance. I feel like it could have had some more development there, but I was here for the friendship and I loved the magic and the world, so 3.5 for this. And then for Believe-a-thon, I started with A Pinch of Magic, gave this one four stars, really enjoyed it. 
I will read the sequel hopefully soon. And then The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I gave five stars a new favourite children's classic for sure. I then read Potkin and Stubbs and just told you about this one. Gave this three stars. And then Percy Jackson I gave four stars. And that was all the books I read in the last couple of weeks or so. Still got quite a few to go by the end of the month so wish me all the luck in the world, I'm gonna need it. <laughs> so these are the books I'm hoping to tackle in next week's vlog. Thank you so much for watching this one though, I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next one when hopefully I'll be doing more things and it won't be a two week vlog again and I feel like I've beat the slump now and I'm ready to tackle some of these big chunky ones. <laughs> But please do let me know if you participated in Believeathon and Raidathon and how you did. Let me know your thoughts on these books if you have read them and would like to chat about those. <laughs> please like and subscribe if you did enjoy this vlog. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again. And I hope to see you very soon with another video. Bye y'all.